Hello, my soccer universe, and welcome to the Premier League Era Divisia review. Honestly, the two leagues that I saw absolutely the least of. Yes, I saw some Premier League highlights, and I probably got from the podcast that I'm listening to a little bit of sense of it. But uh, as for watching, although there were good games, they were all they were always at the same time better games on. So that's why I didn't actually see or more interesting games to me on and that's why I didn't see anything really live and for the Eredivisie I have not even seen any highlights so that part will probably go very 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 quick uh, there. Uh, as the schedule it's what happens with the schedule. I decided to wear West Ham uh, who played yesterday and were one of the big winners moving to the top four uh, this weekend and this top four race is probably the one thing that we have to over all over say is the uh, big talking point because the first game of the weekend and I only saw bits and pieces uh, I mean uh, I think uh, West Brom had had already a big lead when I joined uh, West Brom winning at Chelsea and suddenly the top four race that just before the break uh, we said okay the top four look pretty much set is wide open because then everyone else got a win and uh, to make it even more open the nominally the biggest matchup although it's an afterthought uh, Man Manchester City being Leicester City also meaning that uh, the spots three and four have lost and so everything gets tighter and in a way more interesting as well um, and as, as we'll see uh, Liverpool probably the biggest winner there because uh, Spurs also manages to mess things up there so those for me are the biggest uh, um, headlines if you wanna uh, say so uh, the other thing is, pro is probably that the relegation uh, fight is still on but you know a Fulham just cannot really move and make a decisive um, step so we have to see about that Eredivisie I think all the big ones won so I think uh, at least from a neutral perspective there was not much happening so uh, going in, into the games as I said Chelsea West Brom that was the biggest result of the weekend and I, I, I would even argue probably the biggest one uh, in all the leagues although the Dortmund Frankfurt and Bayern Leipzig might be contenders there but given the implications that Chelsea, who had barely conceded any goals, suddenly give up five against the bottom team in the uh, in, in the league. Uh, no, second to bottom team, sorry. Uh, <laughs> forgetting about Sheffield United. There. But um, that seems um, 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 unbelievable. In a little bit, there were two minor signs that you could have guessed that something like that was happening. First of all, it was the first game that ended the 3-3, where I think uh, West Brom was 3-0 up. Chelsea had, had had to come back, but that was early in the season. But the second thing is, and I think uh, not many think about that, right after the international break, especially if it was a squad like Chelsea, where many players were traveling, and yeah, the South Americans did not travel, but many players were, tra were, were traveling. That kind of invites, uh, you know, you're tired, you probably just played on Wednesday, you had the trip. That kind of invites um, performances like that for uh, of West Brom. We saw it through the uh, board. I mean, in many uh, games where there were many in international players, especially important players, the didn't look as fluid this time around. And it started also well with Tristan Pulisic giving Chelsea the lead, but then a uh, yellow red for Thiago Silva, and I. Yes, I think for a sec, second yellow, I, I can live with it. Uh, that kind of already put the owners on Chelsea to kind of defend. Uh, then Tuchel, arguably also a debatable decision, takes Ziyech off, brings Christensen on. I mean, a co coach is always trying to then think a little bit more defensively. And in stoppage time, Pereira scores two goals and turns the game, game around. And I have, have to say, the way the goals were scored, all of them, they were really nice team goals or very direct play. I mean, one of the Pereira goals was basically the goalkeeper, uh, the ball comes to the goalkeeper, he shoots it uh, towards Pereira, who takes the ball and pulls it in. I think it's a wonderfully played Eng English-style goal in, 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 in a way. And then uh, the the other goals by in in, in in the second half, I have to say, were all really nice moves um, to uh, 
to uh, kind of unsettle the JL series defense. We only can put one back by Mount to make it 2 4, where uh, I think Timo Werner probably could have taken the shot. I'm pretty sure about that, but on, on the other side, taking that assist is also not, not, not a bad. But Robinson scores two more, and Dianne also won. Big surprise there. As I said, the City Leicester game is not much that we need to talk about there because it the implications are rather, rather I mean, yes, Leicester losing, but that was probably the one game they will probably they, they, they were, were about to lose any anyway. Uh, they kept things tight, but as soon as uh, Mondi kind of discovers the, his inner attacker or winger. Uh, nicely slaloms a little bit too through defense and puts it in the internet. Then uh, Leicester needed to all, all open up, and Manchester City could have scored many more. Uh, in the end, it's Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, those two players that, that are so much under uh, uh, under fire for not uh, scoring goals, combine uh, and make it 74 2 0. And uh, that, that was it, it could have been more. And Manchester City, definitely best team in the league. Uh, Arsenal did not show up against Liverpool and I, I don't know, is it because Alison Becker looks like David Seaman at the moment? That was weird. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But uh, Liverpool completely dominating and controlling this game, uh, but it took a while until the goal goals were coming. Diogo Jota has had has a really nice cross by Alexander Arnold in the 64th and a few minutes later. Uh, a typical Salah move. I mean, going through the defense uh, and then putting it even through through the legs. Yes, the defending was not great, but uh, good. I have to say, a great goal by Salah. And then Diogo Jota adds his second. And Liverpool, I have to say, very bad George George's uh, George matchup. I think those uh, turquoise kits were a little bit too light. I actually would have liked to see Liverpool play in the black. I think that would have looked better, but. That's maybe just me. So yeah, interesting stuff there. Uh, Liverpool away from home in great, great shape. So let's see how how, how they will do in Madrid. Um, Aston Villa Fulham relegation battle um, for one team for full for, for Fulham was a finally bad bad last game until Tyrone Minks kind of uh, messes up and Mitrovic, who was great in the international break, scores his second goal of the season. And you think Fulham should now be on the way to get a vital win. However, it's Aston Villa who come back and kind of turn around. Right it was a typical game. It's in the balance. We don't hurt, hurt each other. Then one scores and then uh, the game swings the other direction. So, um, Therese Gay scoring two in the 78 and 81st. And all Oli Watkins gets the deciding goal. Then, uh, Southampton turned right around against Burnley. They were 2-0 down in 28. But, uh, fortunately, 31st for them, they could uh, pull, pull, go back. And then Dan Innings with a wonderful uh, goal. I mean, and that's basically the only reason why I want to talk about that game. Is that is, is, is go the way how he stops and lets the defenders uh, slide past him and puts in there. That was really nice. And then uh, Redmond in the 66 gets Southampton a rare win these days. Uh, wins also rare for Spurs and Newcastle, so it ends in a logical draw um, overall. Probably knew Newcastle did a little bit more because Spurs were really just defending. Um, but then on the on, on the other lay down, Spurs had many chances, especially Kane. I think he didn't get out, out of the post to decide that game. Kane scores two in the third, and third, third, fourth to make it two one. Joel Linton giving in the first one laid on Newcastle gets the equalizer. I from what I, I get, I think the, the that e equalizer was well deserved. Also, Joel Zimmerman is throwing a little bit his players under the bus as he's wanted to do. In some ways he's right, but I think the modern player doesn't take lightly to those comments. And Manchester United come back against Brighton, uh, who get the first goal through Welbeck. Rashford equalized Greenwood get the winner, but in between there was a pretty clear penalty call uh, that was not given for United. That's all I really can say to that game. And then yesterday in the evening, I have not seen unfortunately any highlights of that one. Uh, West Ham beats, uh, wins at Wolves 3-2, being up 3-0. Jesse Lingard get it, get it, get it first one. He's probably one of those. I mean, the one thing I have to, have to say, is there another transfer where it worked out for both teams so well with Sebastian Allaire going to Ajax? He's scoring uh, bunches there and for some reason got not nom nominated for the Europa League squad. But um, that, that allowed West Ham also to bring in Jesse Lingard, who is really great. Uh, 
gets the first goal in the sixth, uh, for Niles in the 14th, and uh, Bo in the 38th. Yes, then Duncan pulls us back, uh, Silva pulls one back, so maybe it was a little bit tighter at the end, but West Ham get a really, really big win for them, um, which may has them move now in fourth space ahead of Chelsea. But if you look at the chances, they're not very much favored to um, go into this uh Fourth slot, it is actually Liverpool ahead of Chelsea. Chelsea. Now, that's a little bit surprising, but given that Liverpool still has a very good rating and very good players, it might well, it might as well be. And I think the international break probably helped Liverpool also a little bit to regroup. But wait, 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 let's see one or two games uh, how the Champions League impacts it. I still, uh, I'm a not high, but I have a feeling that Liverpool could do something in the Champions League. Uh, let's put that way. So that race is really, really ex exciting. And note how Spurs only has, has a 10% chance. Uh, if they would have won, they would have also moved uh, past Chelsea. And that, that would have been big, big for them. But I think definitely point points loss and they will regret that for sure. On the bottom, um, Newcastle moves now three points ahead of uh, Fulham. Uh, who are now a little bit more down, but the last my last match then Fulham needs to keep it within those three points in in, in a way and, and hope hope they don't don't get hammered. I mean, goal difference will play a, a huge deal there as well. Uh, last match day, as I said, Fulham against Man City. Fulham has a game in hand, has one game more as well. So yeah, not a comfortable position. Um, it can also also been seen in the adjusted sense that uh, there is a point two difference already. Uh, we have quite a few games make up, but um, nothing really changes within um, the um, within the rankings if you adjust for games played. Uh, expected standings, as I said, Liverpool moves up into fourth spot. Suddenly, if they find themselves here in the number four spot. Um, Manchester City will finish ahead, ahead of United. Uh, Leicester probably likeliest in the third spot but they have a tough program to finish it out and i think liverpool and chelsea just by talent are a little bit more uh, are maybe more talented teams not necessarily better teams let, let's put them on the, on, on the bottom it's really there is maybe a race for european spots but that always takes a backseat in england because it's all about the champions league so it's really the relegation battle those are the, the other two battlegrounds there uh, in the next round, do we have a big one? Uh, let's see. I mean, this is the round that was filled with goals. So um, there's some interesting stuff there. Uh, Man City leads United is maybe for the coaches the most interesting game. Uh, but I actually think it will be rather one-sided. That was a great game uh, in the first one. Of course, with Liverpool, Aston Villa. You remember 7-2, seven, 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 Liverpool will want to do some, something about that. Uh, we have also Spurs against United. That was, I think, a 6-1 in the... Uh, so, yeah. But I think the biggest one is West Ham against Leicester. Because this is now third against fourth. So, one of those is going to lose points. And uh, that would mean that if, let's say, Liverpool be, uh, wins against the Villa, uh, that they will put themselves really in contention there. So, that, I think, is by far the biggest game. On the next weekend probably one that is worth watching also a good time three or three o'clock in the afternoon so yeah i think that's the one uh in the netherlands as i said i have not seen any highlights but we see that all the big boys have won we have az winning at willem dwey we test at twente which probably was the best game in, in a way uh psv against heracles and ajax come from behind that that much i know uh against uh, herrenwein to win 2-1 so not much change ajax your uh, anointed champions already. PSV probably make making champions as well as that hangs on in there as well. Ajax with a game in hand, which will be played rather soon. Um, in the next round, again, I'm missing the big name math matchups. Uh, really, there we have uh, Feyenoord against at Utrecht, AZ against Sparta, uh, PSV against Venlo, and Valveik Ajax. I think it's all pretty much uh, geared that. Everything stays the same, but you know, whenever I say that, someone blows it. So let's see uh, what will happen on the next weekend. In any case, let me know what you thought about the games this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. That.
Have a wonderful day. Bye.